What's up, Strive and Grind? I'm super excited today to introduce to you a special guest, Marlena West. She is a American Haitian sprinter who competed in the 2012 Summer Olympics, um, representing Haiti in the 200 meter and 400 meter sprints. Thank you, Marlena, for joining us. Thank you. I'm super excited to have you share your experiences um, with everything that has gone on in your career as an athlete and academically. Um, so can you start off by introducing um, yourself to the Strive and Grinders out there that are listening right now? Hi, Strive and Grind. My name is Marlena Wesh. Um, like they, like Devonna has said, I'm a 200 and 400 meter specialist. I attend Clemson University. I'm in my final year of um, track. So I have an outdoor left and I just graduated this past August. I'm in my master's program. I'm taking human resource development and I'm really excited for this interview today. <laughs> Thank you, Marlena. So let's start from the beginning. Um, so how long have you been technically running track and when did you discover this love and passion for the sport? Okay, well, I've been running track, I want to say, for about seven or eight years now. I'm 20. I'll, I'll be 23 next month. And I started running track in the seventh grade when I didn't make the soccer team in middle school. Soccer is actually my first love, but I didn't make the soccer team in middle school. And everyone used to always tell me I ran like a gazelle. So I was like, you know, what? I'm going to go out for the track team this year. And I went out and I made the team. And ever since then, I just never looked back. That's awesome. That's, so soccer was your first love, huh? Do you have you like, yes, gone it back was. to it since that day or no? You know, I've always wanted to because my dad was a semi-pro professional soccer player when he lived in Haiti. So soccer has okay. always been in my background forever. And I just never could go back because soccer is always the same time as track. So I actually, I spoke to the soccer coach here at Clemson because I wanted to walk on to the team and just, you know, help the team out and whatnot. But um, my coach wasn't going to let me do that <laughs> because the conditioning for track and soccer is completely different. So I, I would be in soccer shape, but I wouldn't be in track shape if I did conditioning with them. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. So you got a full ride out of high school to go to Oklahoma, and then you transferred to Clemson, which are both amazing schools athletically and academically. How has um, your experiences at both of these schools impacted your track career? Well, I fell in love with OU when I first went on my visit, and I knew that that's where I wanted to be. But when I got there, it was completely different. It's not that I didn't like it. I still love OU. And if any, if you ask anybody, I rep Boomer Sooner 100%. <laughs> And I just I just couldn't focus there. You know, I was having too much fun. And then again, it could have been because I was a freshman and it was my first year. I had a boyfriend. I was in love. I wasn't really focused on what I what I went there for. I wasn't focused academically or athletically. And it was showing, you know, I was very unhappy with the way I was performing both in the classroom and on the track. And I, I knew that it was time for a change. And, and that's something that I thought about, like, for me and by myself. And I looked up schools and I was like, you know, well, my parents don't get to, to watch me run um, often because I'm so far away and I looked at some schools closer to Virginia and then it was either down between Clemson and, and Virginia Tech because my brother went to Virginia to he was right. he had all signed to Virginia Tech and I'm like I visited both schools and um, I chose based off the coaches you know um, coach Johnson at, at Clemson he was a very very good coach and his all his his whole team loved him and his athletes had nothing but good words to say about him and the team and it showed in the team the team was very very good and the girls were very young and they were um nationally nationally um ranked and i was like you know i should go somewhere where i could i could challenge myself both academically and athletically mm -hmm. and that's why i chose clemson awesome awesome um that's pretty admirable too that you took it upon yourself as such a you know a young college yes player, and, like yep. you're, go you're taking the path of the typical just trying to enjoy the college experience <laughs> as a whole you know and then for you to actually take the step and think to yourself like this isn't taking me where i really exactly. wanted to go and that's a pretty brave decision you know and obviously it worked out for you in the end yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but you've placed high, you've won many awards since high school and in college, and you hold, like, several records. Um, I read somewhere that your 51-4 time in the 400 um, is, or, as le or at least was, um, a national college record, mm -hmm. and um, where you broke a 20-year-old record, which is pretty crazy, <laughs> and they said it was 17th best in the world. Is that true? 
Well, um, yes, it was. It, this was my junior year. It was at the ACC championship, mm -hmm. and it was so funny because um, I was training. I had been training for that meet forever, and I'm just, I just always get the goosebumps, and I always get nervous every time I run. But my coach, he had so much faith in me, and he believed in me more than anybody else. And he was like, you know, just go out there and just run. You know, right. don't worry about what the time says because he's like, just, just, just go out there and win it, and then your time will come. So I went out there and I started, I had a really bad start actually because the girl ahead of me, she was pretty far and I had to play catch up. And that last 100 meters, I just kept on pumping my arms, pumping my arms. And when I came across the line, it said 5143. And the record was 5144. Oh my so god. Like, oh my god. It was like it was like one of the best moments ever. And I was sure. like, and if you ever watch the video, I'm just like sitting there like clapping, like, yes. Like, <laughs> it's, it's such an amazing feeling. And I ran to my coach. I was looking for him in the crowd. I ran to him and I jumped on him and I was like extremely excited because I was number one in the nation at the time. And I was just really, really ready. And I felt like that moment made me feel like, okay, I'm ready to run. Like, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready for nationals. Right. And that was the time that qualified you for the Olympics, right? Yes, it was. Okay, yes, it was. That's awesome. It's funny <laughs> how you, um, how that was like the first thing you thought about. And then it's like, oh, and then I qualify the, for the Olympics. <laughs> you know, it's like a double exactly. whammy. And then you even beat that time when you went to um, NACAC, right? With the 51 Yes, see, NACAC was in Mexico. And it was um, it was altitude. But, I mean, I really don't feel like the 400 is something you can put uh, altitude on because it's such a long race. But um, so I was there. I went there and I was away from my coach. So I didn't have a coach at all. So it was my first time actually being away from him and not being able to, to, to um, warm up with him and everything like that so he was just pretty much texting me telling me what I needed to do <laughs> and it was kind of like hard not having his support to be there and say okay Marlena we're gonna do this because I usually like listening to his encouraging words before I run it because it kind of gets me in the mind in the in the mindset and whatnot so I just go on the track and I'm like oh my gosh I feel huge today like <laughs> That was the first thing I remember. And I'm like, I just feel so bloated today. And I feel so big because I just had to um, get off the flight the day before. So uh, I was just like, oh, my gosh, you know, from Virginia, I mean, from South Carolina all the way to Mexico. And I'm like, I feel real heavy. And I feel like I, I just feel like I can't run today. So I went through the preliminary round and I had got second in my heat. And the next day was the final round. So I just was like, okay, I'm just going to go out there and I'm just going to run. I was like, because I don't have anything to prove to anybody. Right. This is, you know, this is just a meet just like any other meet. You know, it's just a little um, uh, more exposure and it's actually an international meet now. So I went out there and I just felt really, really good. I was just focusing on relaxing through um, through the first 200 and I was relaxed. And I was, you know, catching people really fast. And I'm like, okay, all right, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. <laughs> And then the last 100 came and I knew there was a girl that she went to LSU and I knew she was going to she was going to be pretty close to me the last 100 because she's one of those runners that comes in the end. Right. So I just kept on like pumping my arms, pumping my arms. And I just could hear my coach's voice saying, push, push, push. <laughs> and I just kept on pushing through. But she ended up catching me the last 30 meters. But. When they told me the time, I was like, oh, wow, I really ran that. And he was telling me, um, he had called me right after that. And he was just like, you know, he was like, that was my 50 point. You could have ran my 50 point if you would have pushed through. He was like, you kind of <laughs> got kind of got cut up the last 30 meters. And when she passed you, you didn't really you didn't really react. So I was just like, OK, well, now I know for next time. Right. But it was a really good race. That's awesome. That's still an accomplishment in itself, definitely. So yeah. you're, I mean, that just goes to show you're definitely not your average athlete. Definitely. <laughs> way up there um so what's it feel like to be so accomplished and have these accomplishments like what do these accomplishments uh, accomplishments mean to you well um you know you're never satisfied as an athlete so you know whatever you accomplish there's always more that you want to, to strive for you know and I just I just feel like my accomplishments are just any other accomplishments you know there's always things that I want to do because that happened my junior year and now I'm a graduate student so my senior year wasn't it wasn't a good year for me but now I'm like okay well I'm trying to do bigger and better things than I did my junior year and I'm trying to surpass all my records and all the um, personal best I have for myself so it's never I never get I never get content I never get satisfied and that's what kind of pushes me to work even harder I like that can you take us to the moment um, where you discovered that you're going to the Olympics? Was this uh, what was this feeling like? And was this something that you always wanted to do? You know, um, for me, it really wasn't. You know, 
I kept on thinking about it like when I found out that I was going. I was just like, okay, well, you know, a lot of things happen, but, you know, you don't really get to feel it until you're actually there, if you know what I mean. Like, so, I, I mean, I had thoughts in my head. I'm like, okay, I'm going to the Olympics. Cool, I'm going to the Olympics. And it didn't really hit me until I got on the plane. I'm like, look, I'm going to the Olympics. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's not your average I, I touched down in the athlete village and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like really here. Like, this is so surreal. Like, I'm really at, you know, the Olympic Village that everybody hears all these stories about. I'm like, oh my, this is going to be the best two weeks ever. <laughs> and it was just like a great, like, and then actually, actually it hit me opening ceremony mm. when we got to walk. I think that's when I, I wanted to cry. Like, I, I was like, like where's yeah. Lita? Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm really, I'm probably on TV right now. And I'm like, <laughs> just walking in Olympic Village and it was so amazing. Like, like the, I swear, like they can't even like, TV doesn't describe how amazing of an experience it is. Like, cause you're actually, when you're actually there, it's, it was just so amazing. Like there was fireworks and people chanting and, and you're seeing everybody's different uniform and everybody's different opening ceremony outfit. And you're just like wanting to take pictures with people that you've never seen in your life. And you're like, oh my gosh, look at Africa. Oh my gosh, look at, you know, India. Like everybody looks, it's like a huge melting pot. And then for once you get to finally see everybody unite. And I think that was the greatest feeling ever to finally like to be there with everybody, like speaking different languages and like seeing the different cultures and things like that. It was just amazing. What was probably your favorite highlight um, of that experience? Okay, well, definitely meeting Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> did you just so like, meet picture. him or did you have like a conversation with him? Yeah, see, I have a picture of me and Kobe on my Facebook page, actually. But the funniest thing... The, the highlight of the trip, okay, so my parents came down. My mom paid for my whole entire family to come, so wow. they all went, and they had visiting hours in the village, so <laughs> my sister had came to visit me, and you know, the basketball players didn't, they were the only team that didn't stay in the Olympic Village. They had their own hotel room because, okay. I mean, everybody knows basketball players, so it kind of be a little too hectic for them to stay in one place, and um so, but they'll come time to time to the dining hall and they'll eat, but it'll be like sporadically and it'll like, you'll never know when they'll come. Mm -hmm. So I was in um, one of the housings with my si my little sister and uh, she's only 11 months younger than me. So she's not that little. She was, she was, um, I think she was only 20 at the time or 19 at the time. So she's pretty grown. So all of a sudden I'm talking to one of the coaches in there and all of a sudden outside we see, we see, we see somebody that looks like Kobe. I'm like, wait, you know, that looks like Kobe. <laughs> My sister has this like professional camera and she, you know, she used to play basketball uh, way back in the day. So she was just like, what? And I was just like, I'm not going to be a groupie. I was like, I, think, I was just like, you know, we're all Olympic athletes. And I was just like, nobody's more important than anybody, even though, you know, they get more exposure than us. And I was like, I'm not going to be a groupie. She's like, F that. And she sprints outside. <laughs> and she's like, Kobe, Kobe. And she's chasing him down. And he's just like, he had, a, he had a really, really bad attitude, though. I'm not even going to lie. Like, he didn't want to take any any pictures which is understandable because I'm pretty sure too many people swarm him every single day so he was trying to like get away to get out and she's like Kobe 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 and she's running for him and he's not even responding so this girl gets in front of him looks back and tries to take the picture she's like look at that to take a picture with him That's and so then she funny. finally gets it and then she comes into the she comes back into the room and she's like oh my god I got a picture I got a picture so we're like okay let me see it we look at the picture and she she left the zoom in so it was like a real oh, close no. she got half her face and then half of his face <laughs> it was like the funniest moment that happened the whole entire time oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> was it i mean was the whole experience like everything that you imagined it to be or was it like so much more or like was there something that you thought was going to happen that didn't happen or well, it was a good experience because, but I just really wish that it was somewhere different. You know, London is just like the United States. So it wasn't like it was a foreign place that I've, you know, never been to. Like everything they had was everything that we have. It's just a little more expensive, you know, and it's different, um, different money. They, they use different money there. But it was pretty much like you see everything you see, like 
I mean, there weren't like buildings that we didn't have here or things that they made there that we don't have here. So to me, that was kind of the only downfall of going because like I know in 2000, um, 2008, it was in China and I would love to go there. I think that would have been the best. And I, I everybody tells me to this day that China was the best Olympic they ever, you know, been, been to the Olympians that I talked to in the past. But I just wish it was somewhere. That's why I'm thinking 2016 Rio is going to be amazing because I know Rio is a foreign place. Like right. really foreign. <laughs> really excited. <laughs> right. <laughs> so let's go like behind the scenes a little bit and talk about training. I mean, I can imagine it's pretty hardcore. Um, yeah. You train extremely hard to perform for only a second of like performing. Exactly. You know, so um, especially for the Olympics. So can you walk us through a typical day or week of training or like what it was like? I mean, even now or like especially for training for the Olympics, like what was that like? Can you walk us through a day of training? Well, the good thing about my program and my um, workout regimen is that I'm still a collegiate athlete. So technically, I'm training for collegiate meets and the Olympics is just kind of like an extra. Like okay. I just go there. So all the workouts I, workouts I do are based on what I run in college. And then I just go to the Olympics and like probably probably two weeks, two or three weeks prior, I'll get like olympic workouts but let's i'll go through an average workout week okay <laughs> so this week i don't have an indoor season they do so i'm just kind of training through so on monday we really um on monday is our death day so monday we had a 600 500 400 300 200 200 and it's with four minutes in between and those are the workouts that i I mean, I always get through them, but I'm always struggling on them because I just, I hate speed endurance. I just, I hate it. And I just, I don't know. It's just something about my body <laughs> that doesn't let me get through the workout as, as easily as I want to. Right. So Mondays are always my toughest days. Tuesdays are our speed days where we'll have like a whole lot of block work, a whole lot of, you know, speed training where we'll do. And like the workout will be, um, we'll probably have eight 75 meter, um, and it'll be like one minute rest in between. Those workouts are pretty hard, but I can get through them because 75 meters isn't 600 meters, okay? Wednesdays are our recovery days. So we'll just do med balls. We'll do a whole lot of abs and things like that. Thursdays are our speed endurance again. But Thursdays aren't as long as Mondays. Like yesterday, I died yesterday. I had a, um, <laughs> I had a 300 with um, one minute rest and then I had a 150. Then 12 minutes rest and then repeat it. And then you have to like, Thursdays are your all out day. So you'll have to come through all out. He won't give you time. He'll just say, run it all out. You'll have one minute rest and then run the 150 all out. And you'll have 12 minutes rest and you have to do it all over again. So Thursdays, I die Thursdays too, but they're not as bad as Mondays just because <laughs> like I said, I just hate 600s. Right. And then Fridays will be like, um, we'll have like eight. 200s um like slow pace they'll be like at 34 with um one one minute 30 rest and then saturdays we'll have hills which is always fun because i just love hills <laughs> <laughs> you said that's on a saturday so yes like saturday so we practice monday through saturday okay. and but we don't practice on sunday but to us it's, it, it still sucks because you're like man sunday comes and it goes by so fast yeah, and you're like yeah. man monday is already here again <laughs> <laughs> and, and you, and you, you you're doing hills on Saturday, and then like Monday, you don't like either. So it's like exactly, exactly. <laughs> so it's like you have Sunday just to like, oh man. <laughs> like so I just, Wednesdays are like my Sundays when we when we go in Wednesdays and we just do med balls and things like that. I'm like, okay, well I know for a fact that I'm not going to die today. I'm going to have a great day today. You know, practice is going to be short and sweet and to the point. So Wednesdays are my good days too. Fridays are Fridays aren't as tough. And then Sundays are, you know, practice at all. So it's just you wake up whenever you want to. But I still wake up whenever I want to anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. So um, I'm sure over the years you've developed a, like a specific type of mindset to train for like the NCAA championships and the Olympics itself. So what what kind of mindset have you built for yourself to prepare for something like well, every time I get on the track, um, I always think about my, my, it was my junior year. I lost nationals um, by, um, I was ranked number one going in, and then I kind of got a little too ahead of myself. I kind of like hyped myself up a little too much before the race, and I end up doing exactly what I, I'm not used to doing. 
So I always think about that moment. It kind of just like it, it kind of motivates me to, to work harder. And I always think about that moment every time I like try to get through a really tough workout. I'm thinking like, OK, Marlena, remember your junior year. Remember your junior year. And then I just go out there and I just, you know, I just run. Um, fear is something that, you know, everyone faces too. And I can only imagine the fear that you might have faced um, going to the Olympics or really any, you know, meet. Um, so the idea is like really exciting, but was there like fear? Like, do you face, are you nervous pretty much every time you go out there? Like, what is, um, like, are you scared at all? Or like, what is your experience with fear? As far well, as I am usually nervous because I know I have a lot to prove. And um, usually, like, let's say I go to an ACC championship or something like that, I'm usually ranked number one. So that's probably the biggest fear that you have. And, and that's and that's with anybody. When you're ranked at the top, like, your biggest fear is, is you know, falling or, or, you know, not being able to perform to the best of your ability and the best that you want to, to perform to. Right. So I feel like that's always the biggest fear for me is just, you know, letting myself down and more so letting my coaches down, you know, because I know how much work and how much effort they put into their athletes, you know, and it, and it hurts more for you because, you know, they're hurting that they put so much time and so much effort for you to go out there for 50 seconds, 51 seconds, you know, and to disappoint them. But I know coaches are going to be proud of you as long as you they they say they'll be proud of, proud of you if you put um, your best effort in. But you really know that, you know, deep down inside, it kind of hurt them a little bit more than it hurts you. So right. was there ever a time that you felt like giving up? And if there was, could you describe one of those times and what like really kept you going after that? Oh, always. Yeah. I, <laughs> there's, I mean, well, there's always that workout that, you know, it, it kind of makes you want to give up. But um, let me think about a moment where, um, well, I had got injured um, my sophomore year or, well, actually, I got injured my sophomore year, but it didn't really make me want to give up. But I feel like, okay, so... I got suspended my sophomore year. This is kind of a personal one. Right. I got suspended my sophomore year, and um, it was it was over something really, really stupid and really petty. And you know, I had a lot of growing up to do back in the day. So um, it was where I had to go in front of the board, uh, the Clemson Board of Education, and, and kind of pretty much plead for them to give me my scholarship back and let me let me come back to Clemson. And that's how serious it was. Wow. And um, actually, right then, I wanted to give up because I wanted to just be like, you know what, I don't even care. Like, I'll, I'll transfer somewhere else. I'm good enough. You know, I'll go somewhere else and run for somebody else. And that's when I wanted to give up. And that's when I was like, you know what, Marlena, you have to face, you know, you know what you what you've done. You know, you have to come back and you have to take the consequences and repercussions and all that. But you got to come back a better person. And that was my sophomore year. And then, as you see, my all junior right. year was my junior year was what was the best year I've ever had. You came so. Back that's really yeah, exactly. <laughs> you definitely, I'm sure they don't regret. Um, exactly. So <laughs> that decision. was that was the biggest my my biggest my biggest trial um here at Clemson. Um, I also saw in an interview that um you said that you don't like to idolize anybody because at the end of the day they're your rivals, which yeah. I thought was very interesting because a lot of people idolize. You know, you have your favorites and you mm -hmm. idolize them. You want to be like them. You look at what they're doing and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a pretty interesting statement. Can you t explain a little bit more your thought behind that? Okay, well, um, a good example for that is um, I went to the Olympics, and of course, I've seen, I saw all the girls that were, you know, in the final, and all the girls that placed, you know, really high, and and I saw one of my favorite, my favorite, um, four hundred runners, and her name is Amanda Lee Macho. And she was there and um, I, I took a picture with her and I hugged her and I was like, you know, I was looking at her. She's very, very built, very, very buff. But right. at the end of the day, I know that when I line up, she doesn't know who I am. I know who <laughs> she is, right. you know, so at the end of the day, there's always somebody that that looks up to you. But I really feel like you shouldn't do that because you want to beat that person at the end of the day, you know, you want to be where they are. So you shouldn't really idolize anybody because all you're doing is, you know, just, just behind them, you're in their shadows, you know, right. when you're trying to be there. And you're trying to be there or beyond whatever level yeah, they're on. Yeah, exactly. You know? exactly. <laughs> I like that. Um, so you recently graduated um, from Clemson August last year uh, mm -hmm. with a degree in psychology, and now you're going for your master's um, in human res resource development. So how has, like, your experiences and your mindset as an athlete helped you in your everyday life and future life and career goals? 
Well, it's so much better now because everybody talks about grad school being hard. Grad school isn't hard. <laughs> or at least for you. Undergrad, <laughs> undergrad is hard. <laughs> and now I can say that because I'm in grad school now. And it, I mean, it's so much, you just focus so much more in grad school because you only have about, what, two, three classes to take. So you have to focus, you know, mm -hmm. and it's finally in something that you're interested in doing. Unlike undergrad, where you're, where you're in a, you're a psychology major and you're having to take yoga as a you know extracurricular or something like that right. that you're not really you know focused on so now you know all my my whole graduate program is online so I wake up when I feel like waking up you know practices at 2 30 every day so it kind of gets me it gets me so much more prepared because I don't have to wake up at 8 a.m and walk to class or or take the bus and then it be extremely tired for two o'clock practice because I'm going straight from class to practice I just wake up I get to make breakfast and I just go straight to practice and I'm feeling refreshed. So every single day I have to go 100% because I have no excuses for why I should, I should be tired or anything. Right. Right. So what is, so what is your goal or plan after you're finished with your masters? What is, what is, what are you planning to do? Okay, well, um, everybody laughs at me when I tell them this because they don't believe me, but <laughs> <laughs> my career goal is to be a marriage counselor. That's what I want to do. I, I really, I like helping people, and I was actually talking to somebody about this last night. I just love helping people when it comes to their problems, and I like listening to people and their relationship problems. And, you know, the divorce rate is so high in America right. nowadays, so everybody needs a marriage counselor. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's my ultimate career goal, but I think that when I'm done with my master's, because I don't plan on being a, a marriage counselor until after I get married, because I wouldn't want to go to a marriage counselor that was single, if yet. <laughs> this is probably going to be when I'm about 34, but but for now, I, I actually want to work with athletes for now. I want to be like, I want to be some type of a, a, a academic advisor or something like that. Like, I want to work with athletes and help them be motivated enough to go to the classroom just as if they were motivated enough to go on the field or on the track or in, in on the court. Right. right. So what's um, uh, the most valuable uh, advice you could give to somebody um, since you are planning to help athletes that what's the best advice you could give somebody that's following in your step, footsteps? Well, I think the most valuable advice is to not give up. Of course, that's, you know, that's, that's advice for everybody and it's to never give up. You know, if, if you see something, if you have a goal for yourself, make sure you go all out and, you know, you, you set that goal high enough to where you can reach it and never set a goal that you know you can't reach, you know, always make sure everything is, 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 is in your, in your plain sight, you know, you can reach it and whatnot. But, um, I feel like being motivated and just waking up every day with a goal, like every single day, set a goal for yourself, whether it be, on the track, on the court, not just athletically, but just just if, if you wake up and you're like, you know what, I just want to survive today. That's the goal in itself. Right. You know, I just want to get through this class. You know, I just want to do my homework today. If, if you're not good at doing homework, you know, just set a goal every day for yourself. And, and you'll be surprised to see, you know, what you do like 10 months from down the line or or a year down the line. Absolutely. I like that. I'd say that's probably really good advice for anyone out there listening right now. Um, and now you only have um, an outdoor season left, right? So how does that make you feel? Are you going to other like? Can you are you going to still run after that? Now you said talked about Rio a little bit. Does that mean like yeah. you're, you're going to be able to possibly qualify for that one too? Well, that is the plan. You know, I always tell myself <clears throat> I'm um, I'm just going to go out there. You know, whatever God has planned for me is what I'm going to do. You know, if I don't. If I don't feel like I'm I'm to where I want to be, then I won't go the professional route. But if I feel like I can do so much more and I have, you know, a lot of faith in the way that I could be trained if I train somewhere else or trained with somebody else, then I'll go that route, you know. But it all depends on how this year goes for me, you know. Um, I feel like I'm a little bit a step of ahead um, from everybody else because I don't have an indoor. So that just means that I train through my indoor while everybody else is going to different track meets every mm -hmm. week. And they have, you know, days where they have to kind of like back off on the training where so I'm just going full throttle right. through all training and whatnot. So I feel like I'll be ready when it when it when it when it when it's when I need to be ready. Right. Well, I look I really look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. And so, like, our last question that we ask everyone is, what does Strive and Grind mean to you, and how do you apply it to your everyday lifestyle? Well, Strive and Grind is one of those things that, you know, 
it means exactly what it says. You know, strive. You got to set goals for yourself. That's what striving means. You know, you strive and you set those goals for yourself and you go out there and you go for them. And then grind. Everybody knows what grind means. You know, you wake up every day with a goal in your mind. And whether it's to do 20 push-ups that day or whether it's to <clears throat> work out or lose weight, you got to go out there and you got to do it. You know, no one else is stopping you but you. So you go out there and you set your goals and you do them because all at the end of the day, all you have is you. If you have to motivate yourself to want to be great. And once you do that, you will be great. Perfect. Perfect answer. <laughs> <laughs> so where can our listeners find you? If they wanted to get well, my okay. Facebook, you can reach me at Facebook, um, facebook.com slash Marlena Wesh, <laughs> or you can just look google me um my email is mwesh at clemson.edu and i'm i'm pretty good at checking my emails kind of sort of but i'm always on facebook <clears throat> all the time I'm, I'm on facebook every single day so you can reach me there but i don't have a twitter i don't have an instagram i need i know i need to get in touch with all that because i instagram. i have a lot to say <laughs> so i need to get i need to get a twitter <laughs> Or that, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview with us. Um, I feel like you're going to be a great motivation and inspiration for our listeners. Um, was there anything else you wanted to add? Um, no, just just be great, you know. They don't want you to be great, so you have to be great. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, Shrive and Grinders, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our website. Subscribe to our website. Um, and just stop by and say hi. Thank you, guys. <laughs>